and welcome to this edition of SAC News. I am Maria Gutierrez. And I am Aaron Hernandez. On this edition of SAC News, a chance for graduates to find work. And an opportunity to save lives. But first, professionals from the world of journalism made their rounds to inspire Latino journalists. And I went to take a closer look. The Santiago Canyon College Communications Department invited several journalists to raise awareness about the importance of Latino representation in journalism. Headlining the event was student representative for the National Association of Hispanic Journalists, Jorge Flores, who highlighted the benefits that an NAHJ membership offers. We had an SEC alum, Jorge, Jorge Flores, who contacted me a couple months ago asking if he can come speak at one of my classes, and I immediately thought I would like this to reach a lot more students than just the ones in my classroom. Students from local high schools and colleges who attended the seminar also had the chance to take part in a Q&A session, where panelists like Laura Ana Yamorga doubled down on the importance of reaching out to Latino journalists. There's a huge Latino population, and that needs to be reflected in the newsrooms that we're serving. In Long Beach, where I work, our Latino population is 43.2%. And while that's not reflected necessarily in the newsroom that I'm in, it takes the voices of people like me to advocate for our community and you know, voice concerns of our community and highlight uh, their voice. As you do it. The other invited journalist, Guadalupe Yerenas, emphasized that it is important to let Latinos know that their voice matters and gave some words of advice. It's going to be scary. You're not going to be sure if you're doing it right because there's no right or wrong answer as long as you're doing it. And while, you know, this world is so chaotic and so much is happening, knowing that you belong here to make a difference is what's going to make everything worth it. The Communications Department says that it plans to have events just like this one in the near future to help students connect with other career professionals. At Santiago Canyon College for SAC Student News, I'm Aaron Hernandez. Thank you, Aaron. In other news, the Thrive Center sent a survey for students to participate in. The survey is for Santa Ana College to understand what challenges students face while attending class. Students who complete their survey will have the opportunity to win one of 20 $250 Amazon gift cards. For more information, head to the link below. In an effort to get grads into the workforce, Santa Ana College is hosting its first ever employment summit. Students will have the chance to speak to representatives from multiple organizations like the City of Santa Ana, Disney, and Amazon. Also in the event, workshops that will teach students important skills such as resume building and interviewing. The summit will take place at the Johnson Center on May 11th and will run from 9 a.m. till 2 p.m. However, if you're interested in attending, you'll need to RSVP for both the summit and the workshops. Head over to SAC's Pathway page to register for this event. And if you're in need of professional attire for the Employment Summit, SAC Thrive Center is hosting a career closet. Current SAC students will have access to professional clothing and accessories. The closet will be available until April 27th, and students will need to fill out a Google Doc form expressing their need for professional clothing. Visit their link for more information. SAC ASG is teaming up with the school's nursing program to offer free CPR training to students. If you're interested, be sure to RSVP to receive the link for the online training module. The hands-on training will be April 27th from noon to 2 p.m. at the Johnson Student Center in room 101 at the spot. Spaces are limited, so be sure to RSVP as soon as possible. Email Clark underscore Jordan at sac.edu for more information. When we return, DJ lessons at an unexpected place. And a new cafe for those who like manga. My name is Kevin. I'm a military veteran returning to school and I'm a student at Santa Ana College. I went to an art school in Los Angeles for two years. I realized things were getting pricey and expensive. Um, you know, I was tired of hearing my parents talk about the financial issues we have. Um, at the same time, I also had a desire ever since I was a little kid to join the military. So I enlisted in the United States Air Force for four and a half years and uh, immediately at the same time I got out of the military, I got hired at Disney. I chose online classes because I'm able to have time management with my priorities outside of school and also with the school. I'm able to control my life. My advice for a student thinking about taking online classes is you got to be on top of your game. You have to make sure you have time to do your online classes. It might be easy to forget that you have homework due and quizzes to take. So you just definitely got to be on top of it. I would say online classes are 
just the same type of difficulty as face-to-face -face class. Do the coursework, read the chapters, take the quiz. Um, you still have deadlines just like actual classes. It's been a year and um, I'm able to speed up the process where I'm going to be getting my associate's degree this December and will be transferring for spring. So online classes definitely helps me um, reach my end goal faster. Welcome back. Santa Ana's mayor met up with residents to address their concerns about the city. Our reporter Lucero Garcia has the story. <laughs> mayor Valeria Mesqua hosted a Q&A session with the community titled Coffee with the Mayor. This Q&A session is first of many events she plans to do in order to reach residents of Santa Ana. It's just so important that people can see me, can talk to me, can share the good, the bad, and maybe I hopefully not the ugly, but I've always been very open and out and about in the community. So I give my cell phone number out. It's a, it's a great thing and I love my city. Multiple city agencies had their representatives present ranging from public works to the assistant chief of police, answering questions and grievances. One resident of Santa Ana encouraged others to come out and make their voices heard. Because I am only one person. It would be a tremendous change, I think, if more people showed up to meetings just like this one, especially when city officials are present. One of the agencies that received a lot of feedback was Public Works. Santa Ana City Engineer Buri Rosas highlighted how resident feedback is imperative to make improvements to the city. Hearing from the public and having the input in events like today helps to really focus those efforts and prioritize um, our activities. After the event, an organization that received the most attention was Project Food Box, a program dedicated to send fresh produce to households every week. Project Food Box is a new medically tailored meal benefit from uh, Medi-Cal. So the box contains 16 to 18 pounds of fresh fruits and vegetables, uh, approximately 50 to $60 value. And so if you or a loved one have a Medi-Cal coverage through CalOptima, uh, please reach out to us on the phone and we can um, determine your eligibility and within one week to start delivering a box of healthy fresh fruits and vegetables directly to your door. The mayor thinks partnering with organizations like these will help residents all over Santa Ana. Mayor Mesqua added that she will do neighborhood walks in order to connect with other community members that weren't able to make it today. In Santa Ana, for Sac City News, I am Lucero Garcia. Thank you, Lucero. The Santa Ana Public Library is hosting a free reading theme event for book-loving kids and families. The 15th annual Dia de los Niños, Dia de los Libros celebration will be held at the library on April 29th from 10.30 a.m. to 2 p.m. The event is centered around the magic and importance of reading and will feature an interactive concert by Pete the Cat, author Eric Litwin. Other activities include book giveaways, character meet and greets, train rides, and much more. Contact the library at 714-647-5250 for more information. Students can learn how to be a party DJ in downtown Santa Ana. The Pizza Press is hosting free classes for both beginners and intermediate learners. Some of the classes include DJ fundamentals, music theory, and much more. Free gear will be provided, but you must bring your own headphones. Classes are every Monday from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. It is encouraged to RSVP on their Facebook event page. Dungeons and Dragons is coming to Santa Ana. El Salvador Community Park will be the location for all Dungeons and Dragon players to come and roleplay. The event is called League of Gamers and will take place on April 29th from 3.30 until 5.30 p.m. There will also be a variety of other tabletop games and video games for all types of gamers. Call El Salvador Community Center for more information. And if you're not a gamer but are a manga and anime lover, the same community center has an event for you. Every month, different manga and anime productions will be screened and reviewed by manga and anime fans. The event is called Anime and Manga Cafe and will take place April 24th from 3.30 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. Feel free to bring your own manga and anime recommendations for the next meeting. A nonprofit bookstore that caters to Santa Ana's Latino community will be hosting a celebration of books with author Aida Salazar, featuring the books Jacinta Wore Pants and Calling the Moon. Salazar is an award winning author, 
arts activist and translator. Jacinta Warpants tells the story of Jovita Valdovinos, a Mexican revolutionary who fought for her rights. Calling the Moon is a collection of short fiction and poems written by black, indig indigenous, and people of color. The event will be at the Libro Mobile from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. on April 20th. That's it. That's it for this edition of SAC News. Be sure to follow us on social media and watch previous episodes of SAC News on our YouTube channel.